Over the weekend, the heart of the Catholic Church turned into a hub of technology and innovation. Students from different backgrounds, faiths, and disciplines gathered in Rome for the first ever Vatican Hackathon. Here, these innovators and computer wizards brainstorm and problem solve today's social issues. The event's co-founder, Jakub Florkovic, explains. The word hackathon comes from the word hacking and marathon, but as I was saying, it doesn't, it doesn't have to do with hacking of computer systems, firewalls. It is about problem solving, and uh, I would even say it's about defending causes that we believe in and that unite us. And for this hackathon, we have selected three. It is social inclusion, it is interfaith communication, and issues related to migrants and refugees. The idea of the Vatican Hackathon, or VHACS for short, was jump-started last year when Jakub met Father Eric Salobir, the founder of Optic, a Vatican-affiliated think tank for technology. So this idea came when some students from Harvard came and visited us. Uh, at Optic, we've already organized a couple of uh, hackathons for the church in San Francisco and Paris. Okay. But they challenge us saying, uh, what could you do here in the Vatican? Is the Vatican the right place to organize such an event? Because it seems to be so antique, it seems to be so brilliant, but also, yeah, so traditional. And we say, but the Vatican is also a place of technology. The Vatican is also very modern, and we show you that. And so we say, okay, let's organize that together. Monsignor Lucio Ruiz immediately backed the idea, presented the initiative to Pope Francis, and with the Holy Father's approval, launched the program. Since then, it's been full steam ahead. Now is the time to put the smart people to work together because they were need smart solution for big problems. The Vatican has all of the aspect of the social impact and, and the resources behind that. So to, to combine an institution that cares so much about social impact and improving the world and bringing that element, the awareness to students to attack these current global issues, I think that's what the link is. For me that was a surprise, especially coming from a Catholic background. Like I never thought this would like actually be possible. If the church is open to have that conversation, like who else won't be? So I think for students it's just a very exciting moment to like learn that it's possible if they just bring their creativity and that now that they are tech savvy and like all the knowledge they have, it's possible we can actually change the world. The students had only 36 hours to develop solutions on the assigned issues. After hard work and sleepless nights, participants presented their work at the expo and judging panel. So today we were trying to tackle uh, dyslexia. There's a lot of studies to show that AR and VR are the best bets at sort of mitigating and managing dyslexia, but no commercialized solutions exist. So in the status quo, you have over 700 million uh, people who have dyslexia today. We found out that 70% of migrants and refugees actually have access to a mobile phone, but only 30% have access to a mobile phone that has internet capabilities. So we thought, what can a mobile phone actually do? This is our point, to find some solution for misunderstanding and also some contact between child and child, child and society, and child and parents. And our target is uh, children. The hackathon succeeded in creating an environment for the exchange of ideas. Present were leading experts on the issues and representatives from the world's largest tech companies. Through the workshops and sessions, they were the students' mentors. And on the final day, their judges. So we had a group of professional judges. Um, it was people who were um, experts on the merits issues. It was people from the business background who were able to judge if the idea actually is possible to realize. And we had the people on the technical side to judge how well the students have coded or, or programmed their idea. So we combined these three unique experiences into our, our, our judging board that was then selecting the, the first and second round of, of ideas um, to go to the finals. 24 teams, three divisions. The judges chose the top three from each bracket to narrow it down to nine final teams. The winners received the top prize of $2,000. The whole hackathon concluded with the papal blessing during the Angelus prayer in St. Peter's Square.
I'd like to address a special greeting to the university students who have gathered from several parts of the world in the first Vatican Hackathon which has been promoted by the Secretariat for Communications. Dear youngsters, it is a beautiful thing to put the intelligence that we have been gifted by God at the service of truth and of the needy.